Okay, so this part is about root locus terminology and sketching rule. Uh, um, sorry, uh, root locus sketching rule. Okay. So first, let's see some terminology of root locus. And so let me draw you draw some root locus and explain it one by one. Uh, suppose to have okay root locus like this. So let's say we have one pole here and a pole here and a pole here, one zero here. Okay. on here and real number here let's call it sigma okay and uh, so root locus here would be like this yeah you don't need to know how I can draw it yet Okay, and this one would be like this. Oh, I have another holes here. Like this. And I have a thought. Okay, so first, um, this part we call real axis segment, this and this one up to here. This it's called real axis segment. Real axis segment. And and if I include all of the these this one and all of real axis segment and all of this yeah just it's called mm, wait, wait, wait. sorry uh, we call branch if I also include well real axis I mean only on here real axis segment real axis segment and um, if I call the whole rule locus okay so well, maybe I should uh, say branch. If I say branches, I refer to okay, branches. Uh, refer to uh, whole the whole rule locus here from uh, from this pole that move to become this branch and this pole move to become this branch. So in, in here we have two branches because evolution from two poles. And here another branch and here another branch. Okay? So all of these are called branch. So I should put so this and then this and then this and this. Okay? Branch. And then this point. Oh wait. Um, yeah, this call asymptote. 
is called asymptote. Oops, uh, maybe like this. And from so the angle between asymptote and the real axis, yeah, it's just called asymptote angle. Okay. Should be right. And from here to here also another asymptote angle, okay, like this. Okay, so you already know red, I erase it. You already know the axis segment that I erase it. Oops. One pose and now okay. Well, so before the root locus uh, ap approach to asymptote, it must come from the real axis segment uh, that both poles are coincide, so they are double root. So in this point we call break away because the the two poles just move away from the real, real axis like this. So this point is called break away point. Break away. This one as well. Okay. Um, then asymptote real axis intercept here. So I erase asymptote angle. Oops. Real axis segment was erased, and this point is called asymptote real axis segment. Relaxes intercept. Asymptote relaxes intercept. And this point, this point are called imaginary axis intercept. Okay, so in here you only see breakaway point. Uh, I'm giving another example that you can have break in point. 
so if I have one pole here one pole here and uh, a zero here and a zero here so the ruler curve looks like this Must be symmetric. Okay. So this point is called break in. Is there any question? So, Bon, is there any question? No question. No. Actually, I have a question from a previous part, but we can come back to this at the end of the lesson if you want. Okay. Okay, so now you already know some terminology of locus. So the next part, the main part is rule locus sketching rule. So let's start with the first rule. So call it rule one. Rule one say the number of branch branch equal to number of poles. Yes, for sure. Because all the poles evolve when k increase, right? And then rule number two always symmetrical about the real axis. Always symmetrical about the real axis. Yeah, as you can see here, this branch symmetric is symmetric called to this branch. This branch is symmetric called to this branch. Okay, then rule number three. Relaxed segment are to the left of an odd number of relaxed finite poles zero this one sounds very complex so i must write down Oops. real axis segment are to the left of an odd number uh, to the left of odd number to the left of a single because there could be there could be several odd number of poles odd number of real axis 
finite whole zero. Okay. So I illustrate this by a graph so that uh, you can understand this statement. So let's say I have a complex plane like this. And I have one pole here, one pole here, uh, and another pole here. And its conjugate is here. Let's say zero here, and and then the zero conjugate is here, and then the pole is here, zero is here. Okay. Um. So first, uh, first you need to recognize finite pole zero so all the mark here are finite poles and zero so there are one two three four five poles and three zero three finite zero one two three and then Okay, I'm, I'm going to draw a red rule of cuss, okay? Um, so, real axis segment are to the left of odd numbers of finite poles zero. Real axis finite poles zero. So, real axis finite pole zero. So, this is real axis finite pole number one. This is on real axis two, number two. This one number three, this one number four. Okay. So this statement say like this: it means all the real axis segment must be on the left of the odd number. Okay. So odd number means number one is odd. So real axis segment must be around here and also around here. Okay, because number one, number three are odd number. So, well, so why um, the real axis segment are always to the left of the odd number of the real axis finite pole in zero? Okay, so I can show the illustration from here. Um, well, for the okay, so we start from the open loop transfer function g of s, which is n over s over d of s, then the closed loop okay, g close. C close is n over s over one no sorry d of s plus uh, sorry no no we don't use this we don't need to use this one um okay just use this one um, G of S over 1 plus K G of S. Okay. Then characteristic equation. Characteristics. One plus K G of S equal to zero. Or one or k g of s equal to minus one then if i look at the face 
phase of k g of s equal to phase of minus one. Okay. Uh, then I don't want to move to another page, so I erase here and restart this. Okay. So phase of minus one is two uh, n plus one times one hundred and eighty degree, right? Because minus one means cosine of one hundred and eighty degree plus j sine of one hundred and eighty degree. But of course, not only one hundred. 80 but uh, 180 plus multiple round okay multiple round so cosine is still minus one and sine is still zero okay so for for k just constant then the phase is zero so we only look at uh, g of s for g of s we can yeah, if we know it's zero and four, we can write down like s plus z one times s plus z m over s plus four one times up to s plus four n. So if I look at the phase of g of s. I got phase the sum of all sum of all phase of poles and minus uh, which one minus which one? Phase of G of S, phase of poles, I think opposite eh? to be sum of all the phase from the zero term minus sum of all the phase of the pole term okay so zero z i mean s plus z one and then we call this sum sum uh, plus phase of s plus z two and so on and similarly for the sum of all phase of poles and then Okay, so in order to satisfy satisfy that uh, all this sum of the phase equal to 2n plus 1 times 180 degree, it can be proved that the location of uh, location of S must be on the left of, of the odd number of real axis finite pole and zero right you you just pick one piece let's say one uh, one point here and then you find the face from uh, from this call is this is s and this is p for example p so you just find the S minus minus P is okay. So you find this vector, you find this vector, 
and all other vector and this vector and then you can add all all the angle right all angle like this yeah you add all this angle then you will get satisfy i mean multiple yeah uh, multiple here mean the odd number this one odd number odd number multiplied by 180 degree if you test a point s here then it does not satisfy and if you test s here then it satisfy that's why this rule says like this right you got the point i'm explaining here yeah it's a little bit difficult to explain but if you got the idea i think it should be fine but anyway if you just need to memorize to remember how to sketch following the rule number three it's very easy just count like what i show here on the real axis all the pole and zero you count together one two three four five like this and on the left side of the odd number like one like three if you have another one like five then on the left hand side you get real axis segment i can show you this one as well if i count pole zero together here i have number one here number two number three number four number five and you can see on the left hand side of the number one it, you you have rule locus real axis segment and then on the left of number three you have real axis segment and then on the left hand side of the number five you have real axis segment this one also one two three four so on the left hand side of number one relaxing segment on the left hand side of number three relaxing segment here okay this is all what about uh, about the uh, rule number three then rule number four Root locus begins at poles and end at zero. Okay. I can recall all the root locus that I draw earlier and you can have an observation so look at um, yeah so it say begin from poles you so you can always see that the arrow always get out of the poles see out yeah so this pole just go far away from it and then this pole to look at just go away from it but for zero you can see that the uh, rule of has go to zero here and go to zero here this one also so direction it begin at pole and end at zero uh, what about this one this one so does it satisfy begin at pole and end at zero yes so it go away from poles and tend to zero in infinity so it's called a zero uh, infinite zero because the s that is at the infinity also make transfer function zero 
Yeah. If you recall the definition of finite zero in the previous lecture, yes, you immediately uh, understand this part. And this one also uh, begin from pole and end at zero, zero at infinity, okay, in finite zero. Because uh, S at this part is very large, so uh, it also make the open loop transfer function zero. Uh, yeah, actually, for this rule, should uh, stress that uh, poles of what ends of what, so pole zero of open loop actually. That's why when we before we start sketching rule of curve, we map the pole zero of open loop first. Okay, here this one as well. Uh, begin at pole and end at zero because all, there are two finite poles and two finite zero, so they don't end up to infinity, right? So this uh, pole just end up at this zero, for example, and then this pole end up at this zero. And so, how can we prove uh, if this rule? So, we can recall the characteristic equation. So, closed loop, uh, G close, equal to N of S over D of S plus K N of S. Uh, let, let me uh, recall that the uh, transfer function of open loop okay, G of S equal to N of S over D of S. So for those S that make N S equal to 0 are called zeros. For those S that make D of S equal to 0 are called poles of open loop, right? Okay, so here characteristic equation Yeah, again uh, root local root mean root of closed loop so root of closed loop uh, pole sorry pole of closed loop which is the characteristic equation itself d of s plus k n of s equal to zero so we can see uh, where the pole start the start mean k equals zero the starting point the start just say the start which mean k equal to zero then we have D of S equal to zero. Hi. Right. This means if K equal to zero, the poles of closed loop is the same as pole of open loop because D of S equal to zero. Uh, D of S equal to zero means the pole of open loop. The end. The end means K tend to infinity then this uh, can be rewritten as uh, 1 over k approach to 0 yeah so what yeah 1 over k equal to uh, minus d over n okay d over n of s Oh, sorry, d over n or this one minus 1 over k um, k equal to d over n n over d, yeah, n over d n over d and 1 over k tend to 0 which implies 
n of s tend to zero. So this means uh, the poles of closed loop transfer function approach to zero of open loop transfer function. Okay. Right. So we already proved the rule number four. And the next next part is the explanation again of uh, explanation of poles at zero at infinity. Okay. Just recall what we learned in the previous lecture and in the last week. N zero at infinity. So we say a transfer function T of S has a zero at infinity. If t of s tend to infinity tend to zero, and t s has a pole at infinity if T of S ten to infinity ten to infinity. But this one is never the case. This one never the case. Because this are the only proper system. Proper system means the degree of denominator is always larger than the degree of numerator. Okay. So let's see example. Uh, example K G O S equal to K over S S plus one S plus two. Okay. So we have three finite poles. Which are zero, minus one, and minus two. But anyway, here we are interested more in zero at infinity. Uh, so four like this. But anyway, it the has no it has no finite zero okay no finite zero okay so for large s you can see that G K G of S approximate to be K over S to the three, right? So we take the limit S tend to infinity. So this term is just the same as this term. This implies that there are three infinite zero, or three zero at infinity. Okay. So this open loop transfer function has three zero at yeah. Infinity in
affinity. Okay. So it means there are three branches that uh, approach to asymptote, three asymptotes. For example, I have this one asymptote, this is a kind of asymptote, this is a third asymptote, and one branch go to zero at infinity here, and the brand go to zero at infinity here, and the brand go to zero at infinity here. Okay. All right. So if there are zero at infinity, and with the rule of number four, okay, rule number four say rule locus must end at zero, either finite zero or zero at infinity right so if it need to go to zero at infinity there must be asymptote right so here uh, to, okay, so i don't need to leave this break anymore so then rule number five Asymptotes that can be constructed with the knowledge of angles and real axis intercept. Right? So asymptote. Asymptote. So in order to construct asymptote we need to know angles and real axis intercept. Start with real axis intercept first. Sigma a equal to the sum of all finite poles minus the sum of all finite zero. number of finite pole minus number of finite zero and it's not easy to prove this so I am not going to prove and for the angle of asymptote So it's equal to two uh, m plus one time one hundred eighty degree. But here I uh, use the gradient, so pi over number of finite poles minus number of finite zero. And so it can be illustrated here. Imagine the axis. Ah, oh, I time. Real axis. Uh, suppose I have suppose I have one root here. Oh, one pole here and then another pole here and another pole here so say this is 0 minus 1 and minus 2 this one is 
zero minus three, and then this one is and then a four minus four. So first find sigma sigma of um, sigma a. Um, so equal to the sum of all finite poles. So I have zero minus one minus two and minus four that minus I have just only one zero minus three and the number of pole is one two three four minus number of zero is one so I have uh, minus six minus seven minus seven then uh, plus three so minus four minus four over three so 1.3 <clears throat> so minus 1 and 0 0.3 around here uh, 1 plus 1 third so around here sigma a then I need to find the angle of asymptote so the number of asymptote can be found by taking the value of um, so first find m um, equal to zero, and then delta a equal to one value, and then m um, equal to one, then delta a equal to another value, then m um, equal to two, we got another delta delta a. Um, because there are three zero and infinity. How can I know 3, 0 and infinity? I just see the different of the different number of no, the difference between number of finite pole and number of finite zero. So he is three, right? Then there are three zero and infinity. Then there must be only three asymptotes. So I don't need to take m equal to four. Oh, sorry, I'm equal to 3 and okay, not necessary. Even if I want to compute it, I will end up theta a here just coincide with this one. I mean, the, the, the value of angle must be different, but uh, because uh, it will repeat because uh, theta a here just equal to theta a here plus. 360 degree okay so it just repeat so we don't need to find more of them just find three of them in this case um, so this one is so i can find up equal to zero then theta a equal to uh, pi over 3 so he is 60 degree and then m equal to 1 theta a equal to uh, here 3 3 pi over 3 which is 180 degree and then m equal to 2 theta a here equal to um, 5 pi over 3 so actually this one equal to um, if uh, I can say 6 pi over 3 minus pi over 3 so 6 pi over 3 is uh, 2 pi okay uh, 
yeah, just to confirm what I explained earlier, if I take m equal to 3, then I got theta a equal to 7 pi over 3, which is uh, 2 pi plus pi over 3. Okay, so 2 pi plus pi over 3 just overlap with pi over 3. So we don't need we don't need this. Uh, okay, so how now I can build the three asymptote. Just put it red. Uh, asymptote number one, pi over three, so sixty degree. Supposed to be like this. And then asymptote number two, so this one already draw, and then this one, 180 degree. And then I think 60 degrees should be higher. Yeah, something like this. And then another one. Yeah, the last one. Like this. Okay. Three as well. So this. I over three. And this. I and this two pi minus pi over three. Okay. So three zero at infinity. This one, this one, and this one. Go to infinity. Well, is there any question up to this rule? Okay, if no question, uh, I should stop this lecture.